At 36 million miles, Mercury is the closest planet to the sun. The planet has no known moons. Mercury has no atmosphere. And it's a naked eye planet, visible on Earth during the twilight hours. With a diameter 60% smaller than Earth, Mercury is the solar system's scrawniest planet. Much too small to generate the strong gravitational field needed to retain an atmosphere. Gravity depends upon the mass of the object, on the mass. So the larger the mass, the more the gravity. So on Mercury, the gravity is less on there. Since the planet's gravity is so weak, if you weighed 150 pounds on Earth, you'd only weigh 57 pounds on Mercury. Planet size matters when it comes to the internal heat needed to sustain geologic activity. The internal convection currents that drive geology stop and in general, it just freezes up and there's no way to sustain that geological activity. And that happened to Mercury a long time ago, probably after less than a billion years of its life. The days when the planet beat with a strong pulse that produced volcanic and tectonic mercury quakes are long gone. Is Mercury a dead planet? Depends on what you mean by dead. Is it internally active now? Probably not. It's probably not active at all. It is essentially a dead planet and has been dead for about four billion years. For a near lifeless planet, Mercury still has some movement. Named by the ancient Romans after the swift-footed messenger god, Mercury orbits the sun in 88 Earth days, the fastest of any planet. But when it comes to the time it takes Mercury to spin on its own axis, the planet holds the record for being the slowest. Length of time, around 180 Earth days, about half a year. The sun's gravitational force creates a tidal friction within Mercury, which slows down its speed as it spins on its axis. This means a year on Mercury is shorter than a day on the planet. And that sluggish rotation gives Mercury a somewhat peculiar weather forecast. For six months, the side exposed to the sun reaches 800 degrees Fahrenheit. On the other side, the temperature drops to 300 degrees below zero. It has a long time to heat up on the side facing the sun and a long time to cool down on the other side. And that's why it has these huge temperature extremes. Despite its close proximity to the sun, Mercury is a bit of a black sheep in the planetary family. Its skies always seem like starry nights. The skies would be black. The reason we have blue skies on the Earth is because of our atmosphere. Nitrogen scatters light preferentially in the blue. And so that's why the sky looks blue. Mercury doesn't have an atmosphere, so the sky would be black. Legend holds that Mercury, the Roman god, invented the sport of boxing. This is one planet that's taken the lion's share in the ring. Mercury has had millions of meteors and asteroids explode on its surface because it doesn't have an atmosphere to protect it. Our atmosphere guards Earth from most impacts, like a force field. When a small object slams into it, usually at more than 10 times the speed of a bullet, the collision with air molecules vaporizes it into a gas. The Earth is shielded from small impacting objects by this wonderful thing that we call the atmosphere. And for small objects, weak objects, they will 
be completely destroyed by those forces long before they get here to the, the geologic surface of our planet. On Mercury, without that atmosphere, the asteroids and meteors smack down at full throttle. This makes Mercury the most heavily cratered planet in the solar system. You cannot take a step on Mercury without encountering an impact crater. Back in 1974, the Mariner 10 space probe mapped half the planet's surface, including the largest crater ever surveyed in the solar system. The most prominent feature is a feature called the Caloris Basin, which is a very large impact crater that is about maybe 900 miles in diameter. 900 miles in diameter. That's a couple hundred miles broader than the entire state of Texas. Researchers speculate the iron meteorite that made that impact stretched for more than 60 miles before it crashed into the surface. Moments after impact, seismic waves converged at the antipodal point, the spot on the exact opposite side of the planet. The seismic waves, the shock waves from this thing traveled, and they've concentrated simultaneously around the other side of the planet and literally shook apart the surface. The seismic turbulence jumbled up the crust and twisted the terrain into unusual rock formations. There's all this weird terrain. In fact, the technical term is weird terrain. Because you look at it and it's just weird. It's this jumbled up and hilly and doesn't make any sense according to most geological activities. It's just very rough and looks as though somebody kind of scooped up the surface and just kind of dropped it down. Pre-existing craters suddenly became crude hills, some six miles wide and a mile high. In fact, the amount of surface elevation could have been on the order of a kilometer or two in just a few seconds. It would have been horrendous. Scientists have no way of knowing exactly when the Caloris impact happened, but they can surmise one thing. If an asteroid the same size crashed into the Earth, the impact would be catastrophic and wipe out human civilization.